Hey, you know the All Caps podcast? My favorite podcast in the All Caps, dude. These, uh, these fucking fools, dude. Oh my it's All Caps. It's a damn shame. Just remember all caps when you spell the man name. Welcome back. It's been a while, but a while. I mean, like six months we've been out. Uh, we've just been busy with work, a lot of stuff. But I mean, we're back. If not, then it'll just be me by myself. But um, how to do it? Cause holy shit, I got Mike right here. Um, Mike! He's a lot of things. He's a stripper. He's a. Yeah. I mean. He's a lot of things, but most importantly, he's a DJ. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and a dad. He's also a dad. So. Yep. Yeah. So got a wife, got two kids. I DJ and I know audio and sound production. Like, yeah, I know it all. Oh, yeah. And he's he's a producer, bro. I forgot to tell you. Yeah. Oh, oh really? that's what's up. Yeah. Yeah. He, he wants to be a singer. You like, want to be a singer? All right. I do. Well, show him a little well, Show him a little yeah, good, yeah, yeah. good luck with that. Oh. <laughs> so I can't no, help I, you with that one, it. brother. No, I didn't like. You can crush my dreams. You know? No, no, no. Like, no every weekend okay. we try to do karaoke, bro, but we, we always get there hella late. Dude, I can't do. I can't do karaoke. Like, I get way too into it. Yeah. And I don't have the voice to back it up. Oh. So like seriously, like the magic mic comes out. Yeah. Me, and I just like I. Like the voice doesn't back it up. Like oh. it's it's pretty sad. I'm not gonna yeah. lie to you. Dude, with this voice that I have, bro, trying to do some like <clears throat> fucking Beatles, I can't, bro. I just, I just can't. You know, uh, last last week, um, I was trying to do um, uh, it was a good day by Ice Cube. Okay, all right. And I was going up to every black guy. I was like, hey, bro. I was like already drunk. So, this was uh, where. I don't know, bro. I forgot where he was the drunk. Karaoke bar. At the karaoke bar. Yeah. Karaoke bar. I don't know where. I'm not going to name the place because I don't know. <laughs> teacup so. or some shit. Oh, teacup? Is it teacup? <laughs> something like that. Tea time, I don't know. Tea time. Some, some tea. tea shit. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I was going up to every black guy. I was like, hey, man. Like, I'm a bit drunk, but, I mean, I, this, this, this comes from my heart. Can I do it was a good day by Ice Cube? I'm like, hell yeah, bro. Go ahead. I'm like, Really? Like even though really? Like, really? All excited and really shit. Like the N-word? I was like, oh, I don't give a shit about that. Hey, you know what? You're my nigga, bro. And we we dab each other up. I was like, fuck yeah, bro. Oh my god. Yeah, and not just men. It was like only also girls, you know, because like girls be like, Mm-mm-mm. I saw no, that. Didn't say that. I saw. I saw it happen. Yeah. What? So, he went up to every black person in there and he was like dabbing them up and like, hey, can I sing? It was a good day by Ice Cube. Like, I saw him whisper in their ear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cause so you had to get like 20 different N-word passes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I That's mean, awesome. yeah, you had to. You had you to. Had, you I mean, yeah, you had to. Because yeah. there was going to be that one black guy in the bathroom that you missed. He was going to be like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he pops yeah. his head out. Pop like, his head out like, what, what that fool say? <laughs> yeah. Hey, let's beat his ass. <laughs> no, but they were all cool except for this this white girl. She was like, you trying to do it was a good day? No, you can't say that. I was like, no, I can say it, not you. <laughs> I can. <laughs> yeah. well, I mean, you play it off. Like, yeah. you play it off. Your skin's way darker than anybody else. So it's like, you, you look yeah. like you could have pulled it off. You look like you had a good day. <laughs> it looks like I had a good day, yeah. yeah. And that was on a Friday night, bro. It was good, but no, the DJ was like, the, the little guy was like, yeah, yeah, uh, I'll put you on the list. And then it was like already like one. And I was like, okay, we're going to do the last song. And then I was like, fuck. What, what about it was a good thing? I was like, sorry, buddy. You got to be here next week. I was like, <laughs> Damn. I was like fuck. Week. Yeah, and then Monday at work, I was like, do I even know the song? <laughs> 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 I would just do it just to get, it's like, it's in the end where, you know, but like. <laughs> and also because it's a good song. That's all yeah, you want to yeah. do is just say the end <laughs> Yeah, and also because it's a good song, you know, like that was the only song you'd be down to listen at a bar. Oh, no. So yeah, I was like, love it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's great. But anyways, man, I mean, um, happy year, bro. 
No, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. I, yeah. Uh, I haven't done this in a while, and it's uh, it's nice to be with nice people. Let me put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> it's just calling it, call it special, bro. Cause <laughs> special people. Yeah, because, I mean... I'm a little special myself. Yeah, after the after the talk we had, bro, like honestly, I'm honestly thinking it's like maybe uh, maybe I have autism or something, you know? Yeah. Like, I, I don't know, bro. Cause I mean, with these guys, I'm cool with them, you know. But oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. there's always like those moments where I like, oh shit, I think I'm doing too much, you know? Oh no, I get you. Yeah. So absolutely. like, yeah, it's just like, oh fuck, maybe I am like special like that. But <laughs> I mean, yeah, but um. So, um, so where are you from, bro? So I'm actually originally from Boston. Yeah. Boston. All the way from Boston. Oh, you have an Boston. accent. Boston to Washington. Pa- pack my car and have it yard and fuck you up the ass. Like, my cousins, <laughs> he's in jail. Like, fuck, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so I, um, um, I grew up in Boston and, um, after I turned, um, after I turned eighteen, I went down to I went down to Vegas and lived oh, there for shit. a few years. Damn, yeah. lived in Vegas. You're a party for a guy. Uh, you could say it's, you could say that. Sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> as much as I possibly can be with a wife and two kids. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, but yeah, so I spent a lot of time down there, and then I I, I moved up to Utah because cost of living, and then my wife is originally from here, and so. Mm. Happy wife, happy life. She wanted to move back yeah. home, so here I am. So it's Listen. been a it's been a fun ride. It's been a wild journey, and Holy I, shit. I have a lot of stories. <laughs> so like, what went through your mind? Was like, you know, like fuck Boston. I'm gonna go to Vegas. No, it was more <laughs> of just like <laughs> opportunity. Like, mm. um, so um, this is this is really funny because, well. If there's any, um, well, I'll say LDS listeners, they'll understand this. So I, I grew up in the LDS church and for the, the culture is, um, all the males 19 and older serve missions. So I was a missionary down in Vegas. Oh, okay. 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 So I lived down there, but that's not to say I wasn't like, you know, I wasn't still influenced or I, I didn't meet people, you know? So I, I really got gripped into Las Vegas and the culture and and all that fun stuff and so I when I was living down there I got really just kind of indoctrinated into the whole like club culture the casino yeah. culture the DJ culture and um, it really had a massive impact on me so oh, once wow. I once I I guess served my time I guess could say I I moved over to you or uh, I guess Idaho first and then down to Utah um, oh, sure. and so um just essentially from when i was really young like the whole story with me getting introduced to music and djing was when i was in high school i would go to prom and you know we would go to parties or whatever and the dj you'd play the boots and cat you know <laughs> yeah it really like i was like you know kind of starstruck and so when i went to vegas it just it it elevated that oh, and so i was like I really want to do this. This sounds like something I could do. So I got home, went to college, met a, a few people and went down to Utah, met a few more people. And then I keep going back and forth between Vegas and Utah. And wow. yeah. And just, I, again, mo- more so like meeting people and yeah. like getting introduced to new music, getting introduced to um, new environments. Like that's really the big thing and meeting people awesome fucking people so i'll be talking about me so, yeah. yeah holy shit so how'd you get started though how did i get started with uh djing yeah, that's yeah, uh yeah. yeah that's a really fun question so like i said when i was in high school i the only thing that i really knew and this was back in like um 2009 10 11 oh, yeah exactly i'm i'm old um, which is really weird to say. Um, yeah. anyways, so I would, I would go to these dances, I would go to prom, I would go to these house parties. And the only thing I really knew was like, there was this person behind a desk and they had like a laptop or an iPod and they would, you know, basically just put the aux cord in and go to town. That's literally where my knowledge was at that time. And as I started getting more and more interested in um, 
DJing and um, very specifically electronic music. Yeah. Um, I started understanding more and more about um, different equipment, um, different genres of electronic music. And um, from high school and then going into Vegas, um, I met a lot of people that were working in clubs and bars and stuff like Mm. that. And so I'd probably and ask questions with them like you know what's what does a dj do and you know this this and that and just really just start asking questions when i was living down in vegas after i moved from vegas i connected with a couple of college buddies and um through a few house parties myself i performed in a few clubs as well um and uh after that just kind of i mean yeah just naturally it took off from my 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 curiosity from wow. living down in Vegas and Boston. Cool, cool. Oh, shit. Where are you DJing now? Um, I'm actually uh, freelance, <laughs> is what I'll say. Um, that's the hard part about DJing is when you have, or when you move um, locations, it you really, I mean, depending on who you are, you kind of start from ground, ground zero mm. um, or mm. square one. And so when I was down in Utah, I had a few friends and I performed in like really tiny, like 200, 250 person clubs. And then, um, you know, again, like do the off house party of like 500 people. And then I did a few college parties that were like 2,500 people plus. And then, um, like I said, when, when COVID hit, my wife actually came to me and she was like, Hey, let's move up to Washington because, you know, at the time we thought we were going to die and we have, (laughs) or at least my wife has family up here and I have family in Idaho. So it just, it naturally made sense. So I, Mm. we moved up here and out here in Eastern Washington, I'm sure as you guys probably know and understand there's zero club culture, zero EDM (laughs) culture, like nothing like that. So nothing, um, that would actually like, um, how do I put it? Uh, draw me in, I guess. Yeah. Say. And so it's to answer your question directly where am I DJing now? I don't have a, a place to do it. I literally am just, again, meeting people, yeah. getting in with as many people as I possibly can and telling them my background, telling them my, my story and, um, really just and picking up jobs too. And trying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's it really is luck at that point when you move from point A to point B and just kind of start over, meeting the right people and getting in the right environment so that you can actually start doing that again. But that's yeah, that's so, mm-hmm. yeah. But you've been in Spokane, no? Yeah, I I, I actually just came from there um, a couple of days ago. Yeah, mm-hmm. Spokane's a fun place. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, there's a there's a nice little club spot up there. It's called Night Owl, and that's the place that I go to more than mm. more than any of them. Because again, just strictly speaking, with electronic music, like the, the biggest the big thing that they do there is house music and um, EDM, which again it just resonates with me, and I like it. The atmosphere is cool. It's like yeah. a little closet closet bar, and yeah, it's fun. I like it. Spokane's a, a, a fun place. It's interesting. Yeah, a lot of culture. You know? yeah. yeah, I mean they to, they get down with that. And then uh, I mean, don't want to say they're like no, they they are fucking smart, they're fucking smart. <laughs> so like they kind of know their shit. They're different than us, you know. Yeah, like here, bro. I mean, every single thing, bro. You got to worry about the Mexicans taking our work, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, there's a lot of Mexican DJs, and then they get down, though. They oh, get no, down, that's but true. that's because, like, that's our kind of music, but, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I just wish that people would be, like, more into, like, other stuff, you know? Well, yeah, yeah and, yeah, and yeah. I, I know, yeah. like, when we were, when you and I were talking, like, the biggest problem that I have with, with DJs, like, especially, like, around here, it's, like, you know, they're so stuck in one specific genre of music. Yeah. And so, you know, it, your, your, your reggaeton and your Hispanic music is, you know, it's great. It's awesome. But you play yeah. that for two hours, two and a half hours, and it's like, it's going to get fucking boring. Like, the same yeah. thing with house music and EDM. You play it for two hours, yeah. two and a half hours. People are yeah, gonna change lose. it up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, exactly. So, I don't know. I've got my opinions on that. But, yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, reggaeton, I think, fucking slaps. But you have to understand, like, <laughs> you, you can't play it for that long and expect the the effect to last two and a half hours. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, but it's funny that some, 
some people do actually like dance a whole two hours like not me i, I can't <laughs> yeah, even but, dance like yeah exactly yeah. but like no there's some people that do actually but yeah, yeah. i mean have like, you thought about just focusing on that type of genre and like try to do i mean it, like that's that's kind of the funny thing i um so at least for me and my perspective is yes i like my my electronic music yes i like my house music and I have all the genres of music that I would personally like to play and listen to, yeah. but that doesn't make me a good DJ. Mm. So like, for example, um, here, um, I would definitely want to, I mean, obviously introduce more house music. Yeah. Strictly just because you play house music for an hour. Like that's, what's going to get people introduced to the bar and that's, what's going to get them drinking and that's, what's going to get them, spending right. money like that's strictly what i do for the first hour M- maybe mix in like a couple different top 40s like different mashups whatever but i'll keep it pretty low-key but then yeah like i'll start rolling into like pretty intense like remixes and mashups and that's when like that second hour is when i'll really start getting mm. um um getting a different variety of music particularly with like reggaeton and again like your hispanic music and and stuff like that because the thing about it is you start playing a certain genre of music if you're a good dj you're gonna look at the crowd and you're gonna see what they're responding to and it's really it's not hard like if you're seeing like a sea of people and you play a remix like an electronic remix of of something like kanye or whatever people Mm. are you're gonna see them like bumping up and down but then if you play like two or three um, house tracks in a row and you start to see their heads all level and they're not moving, then that means you got to yeah. start changing it up. So, um, I mean, yeah, like I said, like I, I know I do a lot of Bad Bunny. Um, do you guys know who Dylan Francis is at all? No. no. So, so Dylan Francis, he, he's a really funny story. So he does, um, um, what's that song? It's a, uh, oh, Turn Down For What with Lil Jon. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah that's, or no, 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 not, oh. no, 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 I'm sorry, mm. not that one. It's, um, oh crap, what's it called? Um, mm. but, he did it with DJ Snake. I can't remember. It was super, super popular. Okay, I know DJ Snake, da, yeah. da, 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 da. Anyways. Um, so Dylan Francis, pretty prolific DJ, um, slash producer, but, he went down to, um, I think he went down to Mexico. I, I don't think it was going right, but he went down to Mexico, did a whole thing, super influenced by the culture there, and yeah. he did a whole album dedicated to, like, um, like um, again, like, reggaeton, Hispanic, and, um, like, Latin, like, Latin-influenced music. It's called What What, and it's a, it's a, it's a fucking great album because it, it really does meld a lot of those, like, electronic music elements but you know he's got latin singers he's got rappers on there like they're Mm. all very prolific like um like very prolific um hispanic uh singers and rappers and songwriters and stuff like that and it's a again it's a great fucking album and i i would love to hear a lot more of that where it's this nice combination of, of both yeah no, I feel like people would get down, like especially like us, oh, the younger, the younger kids. I mean, or what do you guys think? Like, I yeah. think so, especially with the Foresight Echo song with Marshmallow. Yeah, it's more upbeat. <laughs> it's like, have you heard the song? Uh, which one? He's got a lot of tracks. It's called the uh, Harley Quinn. It, Harley it came Quinn. out with yeah, the yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah. The, okay, the song's yeah, oh, absolutely. No, yeah, absolutely. Sorry, I, it's just bugging me. Dylan Francis. <laughs> You heard that song, the Harley Quinn one? Yeah, I, I, it was a while ago, like back when it first came out, and it, it, I mean it was good. Don't get me wrong, but I didn't yeah. like you know add it to my playlist. You know, yeah. yeah. Um, sorry, my so ADHD. Get song. low, you know. Yeah. Get, get low, get, get okay. low with the whistle go brown. Yeah, that's Dylan mm. Francis. So, anyways, um, but yeah, oh, with okay. like Marshmallow. Marshmallow is a he, he's a really good guy. He's a really good guy. He's a good artist. He's uh yeah. <laughs> He, he, he does a lot of variety, which is really nice. And I've, again, I got my awesome. stories and opinions on him, but yeah, yeah. He's, he's a good, he's a good one. Yeah. He's I went to see him. Though. Like another one. When was it, bro? Were you all there? Or see Marshmallow? No. Fortnite? 
Oh, more Fortnite, yeah. yeah, yeah I, I, I play one Fortnite. That doesn't count. <laughs> it doesn't count? <laughs> bro, you had to be there a certain <laughs> time, bro. I, I was there. I was there. He had a concert on Fortnite, yeah. 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 <laughs> I was there, too. The Travis one, too. The Travis, Travis one. Oh, dude. I was there. <laughs> dude, I didn't die on that concert, bro. <laughs> yeah, no, that concert, I passed out. Yeah. <laughs> but, holy shit. Yeah. So, like, for you, like, who are, like, the top DJs, bro? Oh, okay. So... This again. This is my ADHD because there's a there's a big difference. So in in, I'll say in electronic music you've got one of two sides. You have DJs and then you have producers. Mm. And my favorite um, people, or I guess um, my favorite names in electronic music are both are the ones that are both. So they DJ and they're also producers. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of people, particularly like. Um, I mean, kind of, just kind of like your bigger names, and this is getting in way into the nuance of it, but people who only go up to, like, the big stages, the big festivals, and they just they yeah. adjust the volume knobs, and then they get off stage. And that's, that's literally their job. <laughs> um, but then you have the people behind the scenes where they're on the computers, and they're more from the synthesizers. Those are the producers. And then you have oh, the people okay. that, again, like for me, like the ones that I know for a fact produce and dj their own music um the ones that i i know love and respect so the first one for me is cascade um cascade he's like ever since i was 16 i've been listening to his music um he um just great producer very down to earth like um like he lives in san diego i'm pretty sure oh, and uh yeah he's uh like he's just he's a He's a fucking real one. Um, and then kind of hand in hand with him, I got introduced to Dead Mouse, which Dead Mouse, he's I don't know if you've ever seen him, but he's the guy with the big mouse head yeah. and like big gimmick. Yeah, exactly. He's he's a like again, he's one of my big big influences because uh, he's very transparent in um like just the music industry in general. So, oh, like, shit. he'll tell you how it is with, like, festivals and DJing and producing and all this stuff. Like, but his music's, like, to me, like, it's fucking great. Um, but you have to like it. It's very niche as well, I'll say. Oh, shit. So, yeah, them, uh, Cascade, Dead Mouse, And then after that, like, there's a bunch of other people, like, um, they may not have been, like, the biggest influence on me, but they're, you know. Mm. They're just as um, their music is amazing as well. So, so like Tiesto, oh, Tiesto's a he's like forty five years old and he's still like he still goes to clubs and headlines festivals. Crazy. Like yeah, he's Holy he's shit. getting up there. Um, I'm trying to think. So yeah, Tiesto and then um, Armin Van Buren. Armin Van Buren. He does a lot of trance. So like that euphoric like. You know, anyways, he's like the godfather of, of trance music. He's amazing. Um, but yeah, so people like that, like yeah, they're, <laughs> um, yeah, they're they're my number ones is what I'll say. Oh shit! I thought you were gonna say like Shaq, you know? Well, it's DJ <laughs> Diesel, DJ Diesel, yeah. I uh, he's a funny story. I I actually uh, I got to meet him once. He was that was hilarious. Ugh. Did you see his dick or something? Yeah, he actually whipped it out right in front of me. Fuck. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so this hey, is a really funny Hey, story. big money. Want to see yeah. the little money? No, seriously. Well, then I want to smack them. His dick was probably about as, like the size that I... Like, yeah, he's yeah, probably yeah. about six feet. Anyways, yeah, um, like just it. really quick. This this is a really funny story. Um, so I, I got backstage to a... Um, well, not backstage, sorry. I got... Um, I went and saw DJ Diesel and... Um, I got the area that I was brought to is what I'll say. The area that I was brought to is right behind the DJ booth. Okay. And the entire night I got to look over the crowd and literally like Shaq was like right there. And I was oh, like, shit. damn, I was, I was on cloud nine. So I'm sitting there, I'm partying, I'm doing whatever. And this, oh my gosh, this is so freaking funny. His set ends and he comes down the down the stairs from the DJ booth and I'm like Shaq can I get a picture so I hold out my phone and he was so funny because he was drenched in sweat <laughs> and um, 
it was like, I don't even know how to describe it, but it, it was almost like he didn't even know I was there, but yet he could hear me. So he just kind of like, kind of like looked forward and I'm, he, I'm like right here where you're at. And I, I was like, Chad, can I get a picture? And he goes, he just moves <laughs> over, doesn't like look at me. He just looks forward. And this is the funniest part. So I get my phone out and I go to like, you know, take a selfie or whatever. I hit the power button. I didn't hit oh, the picture button. So I just hit the power button. No. I did get the picture, but. <laughs> ah, it was, shit. No, it was just so funny because I was like, the last, the, the look on his face was like, I don't want another one of these assholes again. Like, yeah. and then he just leaves, and I, I got to like, but yeah, I got to like, kind of like, just like, like do this. Oh. And he was drenched in sweat. That was the only thing I remember. But yeah, oh, it was, fuck. <laughs> it's so funny. It was oh, hilarious. Shit. I had an opportunity, and uh, I didn't take it. <laughs> Damn, that's like. Okay, it was well. probably like, no, no, you know, you know, I feel when I miss the, the free throws. <laughs> yeah, that was my free throw. Yeah. <laughs> you pulled yeah. the shag on that one. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Make a free throw for me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've got, I've got a bunch of funny stories like that. Damn, holy <laughs> shit. Damn, Shaq, dude. Oh, my God, dude. Yeah, he's, and he's a funny DJ, too, because, like like I mentioned before, like, with, like, DJs and producers, and no disrespect to Shaq, like, Shaq, because literally, I'm not kidding you, everybody in electronic music pretty much does this. Yeah. But he doesn't produce, and the only thing he really does is um, he just adjusts volume knobs or volume levels, which, awesome. again, like, I mean, anybody can do. But yeah, I, mean, I can't stress this enough. Like, no disrespect to him, but he definitely like handpicks his tracks. Mm. And um, one of the things I love about him actually was, um, he came out recently. He was like, "Yo, I, I I don't care if you're like a bedroom producer. I don't care if you're the biggest name in in electronic music. You send me your stuff, and I will play it if it's good enough." Like, he'll Damn. literally play anything. Like, very much just a stand-up guy. He wants to support as many people as yeah. he possibly can. And he, I mean, again, like he said, I don't care who you are. Like, I'll work it into my set. I don't care. If it's oh, good enough, I'll play it. Dude, I can do that, bro. I, I could just, like, get naked or something yeah, and just, yeah. like, turn up and down the volume. It's like, y'all yeah. fucking with me? <laughs> with your shirt off? I'll, I'll do yeah. whatever, bro. I'll just... <laughs> <laughs> Cause like yeah, I look at those guys like, dude, that's a lot of, that's a lot of shit, bro. Like, fucking words in subway, you know? I was like, <laughs> shit, I don't know what to do. It's true. No, like, it's fuck. it's true. Like, and and there definitely are levels to it. Like, I mean, you have, like, um, cause cause he, so here's the, here's the thing, with Shaq, you have, you have this image, right? Like, you have number thirty two, Shaquille O'Neal, yeah. DJ Diesel, like the man, and. The last thing that you want when you're sold out or when you sell at a crowd of like, you know, tens of thousands of people is for him to go up there and make a jackass of himself. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, for me, I absolutely 100% understand the reason why he just, all he does is just, you know, do the volume knobs or the yeah. volume levels. Um, so that's like the first one is you have this image or you have this set and when you invest so much money, like millions of dollars in like a festival setup, for example. Yeah. You know, you don't you don't want to run the risk of like slipping once and just completely yeah, ruining the entire experience for people. So that's like one level, and then you have essentially like what I do, where I do like a a mix of I don't want to say mix, not really, but like I I I handpick my songs, and depending on the crowd or depending on the the environment, mm. I'll curate what songs I want to. Oh, my boy's in trouble. Damn. You was calling? Oh. No, we're good. <laughs> Damn. Oh, fuck. Hey, if bad. you need to answer that call, go ahead, man. My, my bad, bro. My bad. <laughs> it's okay, man. It's okay. Step to the side. My bad. Want. Sorry for interrupting. Yeah. No, no, no. You're good. You're good. I just didn't want your uh, boyfriend getting you in trouble. Oh. Ooh. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. You. <laughs> um, sorry. Anyway, so but yeah, then you have what I do, where I like handpick the songs in the moment, depending on how people react, mm. and then you have a mixture of both, where um, you have this curated set, and then you also just 
you know, every once in a while you'll probably like adjust or choose or pick and choose other songs mm. depending on the crowd or whatever. It again, it just depends on how in depth you want to go with your DJing, and depending on how in depth you go, obviously you use more of the knobs, more of the buttons, more of the equipment. Right. Whereas with sh- you know people like or DJs like Shaq and all those other people, you're, all you're literally doing is adjusting two levels, and that's it. So. Mm. Damn. Yeah. Fuck I me. Mean. No, I mean, we can probably, because I was thinking about it, like, to rent a spot, you know, and we should do, like, karaoke, DJ battles, whatever, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, do, like, a shit, like, have a lot of talent and just people be there to, like, to see if they fuck with it or not. But, yeah, I mean, have you talked to Leva or the... Uh, who? Le- Lebo, the, the the rapper? Oh, Lebo, yeah, yeah. So I followed him, I messaged him, yeah, he he doesn't have time for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which, yeah, 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 I'm, like, you know, I'm, I'm not, I don't take it personally at all. Like, yeah, no, he, he's, mean, he's making moves for sure. Yeah. Um, if he gets bored enough, he'll probably answer my message. Yeah. yeah, no, no, I think he's doing something. Um, I think he was in Seattle from? recently, wasn't he? Yeah, it was in Seattle, and then, I mean, I think... I'm not sure if this weekend or next weekend he's gonna do something here, and then, shit, we're in November, and then next year or next month, I mean, um, I got another friend, Austin. Um, he's also a rapper. He works works with um, Lebo, and I think he's gonna do like a like an album party, November, something like that. November 11th in Kennewick. November 11th. Which is this Friday? Oh, Friday. Side. This yeah, Friday. this Friday. This Friday. Where's oh, it at? Shit. Where, I think it's, it's on recently. Saturday. Yeah, I mean, Saturday. If you if you freeze the Friday, we can go Saturday or Friday. It's on Saturday. Maybe you can fucking talk to the DJ. Yeah. yeah some no, I'm I'm always shit. down. Like yeah. if nothing else, I mean, it's just networking. It's meeting people. So. Yeah. If Where, anything, we, where's we it can at? Meet is it at like? It's the same spot we went. No. I have no clue. Tap and table. Or? Up in Southridge. Oh, Southridge. Okay. Yeah. Just as good as Washington. They do events in Southridge. Well, uh, yeah, well I mean, they, they run stuff out. Oh, well, gotcha. not not not, okay. the, not the school, but like around that area. Yeah, yeah, yeah that area. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. They run stuff out and make parties and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, this, he said this one's gonna be big. Okay. So it'd be <laughs> I'm always down. It'd right. be cool to check it out. Well, I mean, yeah. if nothing else, because like selling, I said, like moving up here when they're selling tickets online. It just says, uh, oh, you gotta pay? Answer. Damn, I'm cheating. No, dude. <laughs> no, I think, it, no. Because we, when we went, we put like, I mean, five bucks, five bucks, you know. It says limited tickets available. I don't think so. They always say that. Yeah, they, yeah. they, they yeah. always say, <laughs> remember, Goodbye. bro? It was like, oh man, tickets sold out. And then I texted him, was like, hey, bro, pull up. I got a couple tickets for you. Yeah. He pulled him out. Pulled like, up, and they gave us like four yeah, like, tickets for free. And I was like, you know what? You guys are cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, trying exactly. to see if they get money out of yeah. it. Yeah. But no, I mean, they sell merch, all that stuff, you know, down there. It's just, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Kenobi is just like, it's a hometown, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, but yeah, yeah they, he makes the money in LA, mm-hmm. Seattle, fucking. Big cities. Yeah, in the big oh, city, yeah. yeah. Well, I look at his crowds, and it looks like he, he pulls some. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I don't want to show on the, on the people, on, on the fans, but it's just like, it's just some crazy people, bro. <laughs> <laughs> some crazy people, it's bro. A they, di- it's a different culture. Yeah, they go crazy. I'm like, holy, holy cow. Oh, yeah. Some, like, mosh pit, all that stuff. Like, oh, yeah. I want to be in the mosh pit with you. No, I mean, look, I play football, everything, but, like, I'm not, like, really into that, you I know? know? I don't want to, like, bump into people. Whatever, <laughs> whatever, bro. But if I get drunk, I'll do it. So I might <laughs> knock some people out. Or off shrooms and shit? Yeah. Oh. Dude, last time I was I was high. I took a couple of edibles, and then... I don't know where, dude. I was just looking at the stage, and I was like... I was floating. I was like, holy shit. I was, David, hold my hand. David, hold my hand. And then he was like, bro, bro, you get it, bro. I was like, no, bro, I'm floating away. Yeah. Dude, I was like, I was looking around, and I see stars, and I'm like, fucking right. I was like, oh, my God. That's hilarious. Yeah, and then then you see all the people going crazy. Oh, my God, no. You were just in your own little space. Yeah. Just like, hold my hand. Yeah, no, I was like, I didn't like the experience. But I'd rather drink than oh, take yeah. any. I, I, I somewhat understand it. Yeah. yeah, but 
No, I mean we we should pull up and see. I mean he's gonna be yeah. there. He's gonna talk to us for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it'll be it'll be I've a good seen. experience to check Absolutely, it out. Yeah. What so like what event center or what space is it in? Do you know? I have no clue. I, uh, fair enough. I don't think it shows yet. Fair I, enough. I don't know. <laughs> it's just like a pop up. Buy a ticket, like, yeah. but don't 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 yeah. don't know where. <laughs> just just buy the ticket. Tell you where it's at. Just buy a ticket. It's yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> can't wait. Can That's a out. great idea. So I got enough. No, but buy the ticket. We don't. We're not gonna tell you. No, I'll, I'll figure Fucking it out. But, but yeah, yeah, well, we should. I mean, uh, that's all I want to do. You know, like, cause I mean, people believe in me. It's like, oh yeah, you got the talent, bro. You can do whatever you want. I was like, fuck yeah. Mm-hmm. So no, so now I'm like out here, like telling people you can do whatever you want. But um, yeah, I mean, just a chance to do it, you know. No, absolutely. Well, like I said, just like even if just like you know talking with people that, yeah. that want to go out and do the same shit as me, like that 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 means way more to me than anything else. Because like like I said, when I moved up here, I was like, where the hell is like the like, where are the parties at? You know, <laughs> like there's yeah. nothing out here. And then I finally got introduced to it, and oh, dude, this is a funny story. Like, oh my gosh, so there was. Um, there was a place in Richland, and I saw, um, it was like an ad, and it was like, EDM night or electronic music night. I'm like, mm. oh, yeah, sure, absolutely, I'll check it out. I haven't been there before. Yeah. Dude, I went in there, and it was like, it was some Asian restaurant. Oh, <laughs> it and is, just like last week. <laughs> basic, no, basically, that's almost exactly what it was like, but it was some Asian restaurant. It was pretty, pretty small, and there was like maybe 10 people there <laughs> yeah and the dj that was playing like he started out exactly like i said he played house music he was great he yeah. was awesome yeah and then this is even funnier so these two like super hot chicks came in and i don't know if you've ever been to like raves or festivals or something but they were like the dancers oh. they had like the lights like they were ready you know what i mean and i'm sitting there i'm like okay this might get interesting so the the opener he straight up like so he he leaves and then the the headliner comes on and this dude he's like he's like six five he's oh. got shoulder long hair and he's straight up playing like that's probably leap like do you know what rhythm and dubstep are like you ever hear no. it's it's like super intense like head banging electronic music oh. and if you can imagine this tiny. Chinese food restaurant. The little Asians like, oh no, what is going no, on? No, exactly. And then <laughs> ten people just like not knowing Hiroshima. what to do. Like Hiroshima, what the fuck? <laughs> oh no, Hiroshima. <laughs> oh Hiroshi. <laughs> That's no. what it was like. It was so oh, un- but... it was so uncomfortable because and then this is this is the funniest part about it. So I couldn't take it anymore because yeah. of how awkward it was. So I went outside and they had like you know, benches outside or whatever. So I'm sitting at a table, I'm texting my buddy and telling him about this whole experience. So these two, uh, these two girls, they were sitting out there talking with like some of the bar owners or the event or whatever it was, like people that were actually like in charge of the event. And the guys were so offended because these chicks were roasting them. Oh, it was hilarious so the guys were like why are you leaving party's just getting started like don't you like this and they're like no we can't fucking dance to this like your music <laughs> blows yeah and they're like no it's awesome they're like no we're leaving and anyways oh, it was this whole God. exchange and i'm just sitting there like i said i'm texting i'm like <laughs> <laughs> eating your orange chicken <laughs> yeah seriously eating orange chicken or something <laughs> like i should have ordered something i felt so bad <laughs> yeah no, you just went to no, to a restaurant in Pasco. I, I I told him, like, bro, it's gonna be so good. On the poster, there were like two girls, like, bro, there's gonna be hella bitches, bro. It's gonna be hella good. And we got there, and there was like only like, it was like Mexicans that work at the farms, you know. <laughs> I was like, fuck. <laughs> and there was just there, you know, all Sandy like looking for girls, but there was like just just a waitress, you know. So oh, yeah. like, you couldn't yeah, do yeah. shit. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, we just got a dream, and then we're like, all right, bro, let's get the fuck out of it's here. It's so funny. But it's yeah, I mean, it's like, I mean, it happens, but that's the thing. Uh, I just want to know people, so. Oh, yeah. Like, there's something. That's why I did the pod, too. Like, right now, we're not, like, super big, but hopefully we get to a point where, we're like, hey, I got something, something going on, you know? And be like, 
I bet I'll pull up, you know? Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. I absolutely get that. But, yeah, I mean, shit, I mean. You mean, you mean. You mean. I mean, I think, I mean, I, I think I'm gay, bro. No, I'm gay. Uh, anyways, <laughs> that's all the time we have for today. Um, how long has it been? Like, I, I don't know, bro, but no. Um, three months? Oh, yeah, it's been so long, but. Damn. Wipe <laughs> yeah. the dust off. Yeah. Just work, man, you know. There was a monster. It's like a, a monster named <laughs> came in and attacked us or something. I don't know. <laughs> something happened. We call it, we call it uh, a monster, you know? basically just came and spit on the... Said, fuck you guys. Yeah. <laughs> pretty much. But, no, yeah, yeah, no, pretty much. We'll, we'll just leave it for another episode, but, yeah, I mean... It's good to have you on, bro. If anything, if you got Thank something you. going on, bro, yeah, at, going or right. after the label, we can talk about it and see oh, where we're at, you know? Yeah. For sure. Talk more. It's just right now. Oh, this is cool. It's 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 a good outlet. I like this. I yeah. like this stuff. You guys are chill. So hopefully, think, yeah, think. hopefully we can uh, find some events and yeah, with you with the Lebo event, that would be that would be fucking fucking rad. Oh yeah, yeah. cool. Yeah, definitely. Looking forward to it. Well, that was it, guys. Make sure you subscribe. You like the video. Subscribe to my OnlyFans. Ooh. And yeah, yeah, I've only. All right. Yeah. Can you find her? All right. <laughs> no, you find no, no, no. Um, these these two guys are gonna do a new video right now, so keep we'll keep you updated on that. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> not these two guys. These two guys. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah he's gonna play some music. I'll twerk some, on some it. Some dubstep or yeah, I'll twerk on that <laughs> shit, bro. Fucking. Be ready for it, man. Only five bucks, you know. Only that's five cheap. bucks. Right? Come on. <laughs> I might take my shoes off. <laughs> oh man, ten dollars for that one. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Thank yeah. you, man. No, I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, man. <laughs>